The Whisper of the Silk Road Chapter 1 The Imperial Summons The Imperial Palace of Beijing rose majestic splendor, evidence of the Ming Dynasty's strength. Its towering red walls are bathed in sunlight, highlighting the delicate dragon carvings. They shimmered with a golden radiance. The walls enclosed the Forbidden City, a labyrinth of increasingly stunning palaces, gardens, and courtyards. The air was fragrant with peonies blooming in the imperial gardens, while the peaceful sound of water murmuring in the marble fountains lent a tranquil harmony to the luxurious setting. At the heart of this grandeur, within a lavishly adorned reception hall, complete with paintings of legendary emperors and mythical beasts, Liang Wei stood, his heart beat a loud testament to his eager anticipation and nervousness. His eyes swept the exquisite decorations, the silk tapestries and jade sculptures each display more lavish than the next, embodiments of the empire's wealth and culture. Yet even these splendors seemed insignificant compared to the daunting task ahead, a task steeped in immense honor and heavy duty. The resonant sound of a gong filled the hall, signaling the emperor's approach. The heavy, intricately carved doors swung open to reveal the sovereign, a figure of absolute authority and power. His luxurious silk robes caught the light with each step he took, and his golden crown, studded with precious stones, scintillated like stars against the night sky. Flanked by a procession of advisers and guards, their presence amplified the moment's gravity. Upon the emperor's entrance, Liang Wei bowed in profound reverence, his heart a flutter with awe and gratitude. It was a rare privilege to stand before the Son of Heaven. When their gazes met, Liang Wei could feel the weight of historical significance pressing upon him. With the commanding presence that befitted his position, the Emperor spoke. Liang Wei, your renown as a master cartographer has reached my ears. Our empire is poised for triumph, and your artistry will pave our way to glory. The charge I entrust to you carries exceptional weight, you are to map the entire known world. The significance of the emperor's words dominated the atmosphere. Liang Wei perceived the gravity of this responsibility resting on his shoulders, a charge not merely of service but of profound consequence that could shape the empire's destiny. With a voice fortified by duty, Liang Wei accepted his charge. Your Majesty, I undertake this task with the deepest honor and humility. I shall devote every ounce of my knowledge and ability to fulfill your esteemed vision. Standing before the emperor, Liang Wei's mind whirled with thoughts of unexplored lands, the perils of the unknown, and the vastness of his obligation. His astrolabe and inkpot, the essential instruments of his craft, stood by his side silent partners in the monumental journey that awaited him. With heartfelt gratitude, he acknowledged the honor bestowed upon him. I am profoundly thankful, your majesty, for entrusting me with this pivotal endeavor. Rest assured, I will strive to merit the trust you have invested in me. Stepping away from the imperial presence, Liang Wei's stride was relentless, his mind teeming with strategies and plans. Exiting the palace and emerging onto the vibrant streets of Beijing, he fully grasped his mission's scope, the emperor's mandate transcended mere orders, it was the beginning of an odyssey that would define both his legacy and the fate of the empire. Chapter 2. Assembling the Caravan With the emperor's mandate resonating in his thoughts, Liang Wei stepped into the bustling heart of Beijing, each step driven by his determination to map the known world completely. His eyes sparkled with ambition, his mind already embarking on the grand adventure that awaited an odyssey not just of miles but of discovery and legacy. The vibrant city streets thrummed with life, a symphony of colors, sounds, and aromas. Merchants hawked everything from exotic spices to luxurious silks while people streamed through the alleys like currents in a river. Amidst the crowd, Liang Wei sought the skillful individuals essential for his monumental task. His search led him first to Anara, a Kazakh horsewoman whose reputation as an exceptional rider and navigator had spread to the thoroughfares of Beijing. She moved with a poise that suggested hidden strength, her gaze alight with untold tales of the sprawling steps. Wrapped in an air of enigma, 
She listened intently as Liang Wei described the journey's extent and the pivotal role she could play. Her expression was inscrutable, yet a spark of intrigue ignited in her eyes. Next, he encountered Giovanni, an Italian merchant whose linguistic prowess was as celebrated as his business savvy. Fluent in many tongues and versed in the cultures strung along the Silk Roads, Giovanni's initial reluctance to depart his affluent trade faded as Liang Wei appealed to his spirit of adventure and the prospect of unearthing new trade routes. The allure of the unknown gradually supplanted Giovanni's hesitance. As Liang Wei wove through the streets, he met others destined to form the core of his team, a seasoned navigator of southern seas, a scholar versed in the diverse cultures they would meet, and a cadre of steadfast guards for protection against the journey's perils. With each recruit, Liang Wei's excitement swelled. He was assembling not mere individuals but a mosaic of skills and experiences, creating a collective capable of withstanding the rigors of the Silk Roads. His leadership and persuasive skills shined as he united them under a shared cause. The planning was thorough, with Liang Wei orchestrating every aspect, from provisions to potential pathways, ensuring their readiness for whatever lay ahead. His organizational prowess, as profound as his cartographic expertise, cemented confidence within his team. The team's final assembly saw Liang Wei's belief in their potential cement, the faces around him beamed with the promise of achieving a feat for posterity. The spirit of purpose and adventure thrummed palpably among them, each member eager to play their role in this historic quest. Chapter 3 Setting Forth on the Silk Road With dawn breaking over Beijing, a gentle radiance settled upon the waking city. Streets buzzed with vendors and citizens beginning their day, an everyday hustle that supported the anticipatory excitement of Liang Wei's caravan. The travelers, a mix of optimism and anxiety, focused relentlessly on the path unfolding before them. Navigating the crowded thoroughfares presented the caravan's first of many challenges. Horses, carts, and supplies formed a long procession that snaked slowly through the city, drawing the curious gazes of onlookers. Liang Wei, leading confidently, ensured each supply bundle was secure and every team member was in place. As he steered the caravan, Liang Wei's leadership flourished. He appointed tasks according to each individual's strengths, Anara managed the horses with skill, securing their well-being for the trek, Giovanni, drawing upon his linguistic talents, engaged with local vendors for last-minute supplies, the rest, adept in trade and navigation, contributed to the seamless function of their departure. Leaving behind the urban chaos of Beijing, they embarked onto the open vistas of the Silk Road where the landscape shifted vastly from the known to the enigmatic, from familial comforts to the allure of distant realms. The convoy's first significant test arose as a landslide had obstructed the road. The ensuing halt compelled the group to tap into their collective problem-solving skills. In these moments of unity and discussion, their camaraderie and trust truly began to take shape if they could tackle this, they could tackle the unforeseen challenges that lay ahead. Beyond Beijing's confines, the world transformed the pastoral outskirts and modest settlements eventually yielded to the rugged majesty of the Silk Road. As fresh air and open skies replaced the city's hum, external and internal challenges emerged. Inside the group, tensions flared over disagreements on the preferred route and day-to-day -day decisions, emphasizing the varied perspectives within the team and underscoring the necessity for compromise and mediation with Liang Wei steering these discussions. Time, they brought a natural rhythm to their travels. The initial tumult of departure gave way to a comfortable cadence, each member growing confident in their roles. They discovered a sense of belonging to something far grander than themselves, which galvanized their solidarity and purpose. As they moved forward, the caravan thrived on encounters with local inhabitants and fellow wayfarers, whose stories enriched their understanding of the cultural mosaic that painted the Silk Road. As this chapter ended, the caravan, having navigated its first hurdles, proceeded with a collective sense of progression. No more were they a disparate assemblage but rather a unified force set on charting the as-yet-unknown. 
Chapter 4, Trials of the Gobi As dawn's early light began to sweep the horizon, Liang Wei and his caravan bade farewell to the last signs of Beijing, journeying into the embrace of the Silk Road with their camels bearing the weight of necessary supplies. Eager anticipation pulsed through the group, each member brimming with readiness for the adventures that stretched out before them. The Gobi Desert loomed vast and unyielding, a grand expanse of sand and stone that lay endless under the sky. Its majestic scale was a humbling reminder of its smallness against nature's sweeping grandeur. Venturing deeper into the desert, the caravan faced the daunting challenge of extreme elements. The relentless heat was unforgiving, turning water into a treasured resource while the dry air rendered speech laborious. Their ordeal intensified as a ferocious sandstorm descended upon them, cloaking the caravan in a dance of wind and sand. With visibility reduced to nothing, the group scrambled to find refuge, their collective resolve tested against the desert's wrath. In these harrowing moments, Liang Wei's ingenuity emerged. With astrolabe in hand, he navigated through the turbulent sands, embodying a pillar of calm for the travelers. Guided by his steady hand, they discovered some semblance of safety, solidifying their trust in his guidance. Together, they fought against the storm's fury, securing tents and safeguarding possessions efficiently that, attested to their growing adaptability and transformed them into a unified front. During these trials, a camel succumbed to sickness, worsening. Swiftly, Anara's skills as an equestrian shone as she tended to the ailing animal with a mix of traditional remedies and unyielding care, her actions further cementing her role as an indispensable member of the group. A celestial canvas unfolded above them as the storm eased and night cloaked the desert. Stars shone with an intensity lost beneath the city's glare, a spectacle that left them in respectful silence. Watches were set, the group finding comfort under the desert night's tranquil beauty. A candid dialogue blossomed between Liang Wei and Anara in the stillness, their voices a quiet testament to the serenity enveloping them. Their conversation, laden with introspection, deepened the bond forming between them. The lull was abruptly shattered when a dune collapsed unexpectedly, entrapping one of the guards. Panic ricocheted through the group, urgency propelling them toward collective action. Shoulder to shoulder, Liang Wei and his companions labored to rescue their trapped comrade. Their determination did not falter under strain, and when the guard was finally freed, their collective sense of relief was palpable, voiced in triumphant cheers that resonated with the spirit of their bond. Settling down for the night, each challenge had only increased Liang Wei's determination and grit. The desert landscape, harsh and unforgiving, was sculpting them into a resilient and formidable collective capable of overcoming the vastness of their mission's demands. Chapter 5 The Wonders of Samarkand Nearing Samarkand infused the air with an electric vibrancy. The city, a shining jewel along the Silk Road, unfurled like a vibrant tapestry adorned with animated streets, teeming markets, and majestic structures. The clamor of commerce resonated as merchants promoted their goods, and traders engaged in spirited barter while locals expertly navigated the crowds. The team marveled at the city pulsating with life, its domes and tiled minarets painting starkly contrasting the muted tones of the Gobi they had traversed. Markets burst with various colors, brimming with luxurious textiles, gleaming pottery, and spices emitting tantalizing fragrances. In the bustle, Liang Wei and Anara immersed themselves, engaging with the Samarkand people, each interaction weaving richer hues into their tapestry of cross-cultural exchange. The caravan members' voices melded with those of the locals, creating a harmonious blend of curiosity and shared humanity. The caravan's palate explored the bold, novel flavors of the local fare, each taste narrating Samarkand's opulent trade legacy. Encountering a local warlord revealed to them the city's complex political tapestry, challenging their tact and diplomatic finesse. Giovanni's linguistic dexterity emerged as he negotiated skillfully with a merchant, affirming his value to their mission. Captivated by the architectural splendor, 
Liang Wei's sketches documented the minutiae of Samarkand's wonders, his pen embroidering the city's outline onto the fabric of his map. Meanwhile, Anara found kinship among the horsemen, her equine prowess bridging cultural divides. The undercurrents of a silent power contest thrummed beneath the city's vibrancy, offering a stark reminder of the intricate human tapestry that stretched beyond their diverse caravan. In Samarkand's melting pot, Liang Wei's preconceived notions were challenged, prompting introspection and personal expansion. Still, navigating the city's political complexities provoked internal conflict, with heated debates showcasing a collage of perspectives. Ultimately, their unified commitment to the mission and mutual respect helped them navigate this socio-political maze. Upon departure, Samarkand left a lingering suspicion of the complexity that might entangle their journey forward, each step taking them deeper into a world rich with the unknown. Chapter 6 – The Perilous Pamir The Pamir Mountains stood before them, sentinel-like, ancient guardians of the Silk Road path with their snow-capped summits hiding paths as treacherous as they were breathtaking. Entering the Pamas heralded immediate omens of peril. Narrow tracks clung to sheer cliffs, and sudden meteorological shifts from calm to tempest challenged their every step. Amidst these precarious conditions, Anara's expertise in navigating rugged terrains shone brightly. Her vigilant eye scanning the daunting environment ensured the safest passage for the caravan. As their challenge within the Pamir's embrace unfolded, the journey exacted its toll physically and psychologically, magnifying each tension and testing their collective solidity. A harrowing avalanche precipitated crisis, obstructing their route and testing their survival instincts. With no choice but to sanctuary in haste, they contended with scant resources while the encroaching snow threatened to consume them. Anara orchestrated the crafting of emergency shelters, displaying resourcefulness that bolstered their spirits amidst dwindling provisions and chilling cold. As internal strife flared, exacerbated by their precarious circumstances, the group faced the storm's brute strength. Yet, in this crucible of nature's wrath, Anara's steadfast leadership and intimate knowledge of the explosive terrain provided life-saving guidance. Emerging from the mountain's clutches, the group, weathered and weary, realized they had cultivated robust mutual respect and a fortified camaraderie, essential elements for the road ahead. In the aftermath, Liang Wei reflected on Anara's indispensable role in their preservation, their bond deepened by adversity and the trials they faced within the Pamir's perilous arms. The chapter concluded with the caravan marching forward, the Pamir's receding but the echo of future challenges ringing clear, their journey etching onward unfurling with tension and the impetus of the unknown still to be charted. Chapter 7 – Persian Intrigues Isfahan greeted the caravan with a grandeur of ancient splendor. The energy of its marketplaces buzzed with life, and grand mosques stretched their domes heavenwards while opulent palaces echoed with the whispers of the empire's past. The aroma of spices and the clamor of bargaining infused the air, weaving an intoxicating ambience of charm and complexity. In the city's veins, Mirza Abbas, a Persian nobleman famed for his scheming intelligence and relentless ambition, wielded influence manifest in the deference of the common folk and whispered speculations among market-goers. This man's reputation for mastering the intricate game of power was as well known as it was feared. The welcome Liang Wei and his entourage received in Isfahan was warm yet tinged with wariness. Alert to their mission, Isfahan's authorities offered them the seemingly hospitable oversight of Mirza Abbas, a proposition promising valuable connections but veiled with potential peril. The palpable tension of political strife filled the air as Isfahan's loyalties swayed on a pendulum of power struggles and silent bids for dominance. Against this backdrop of deception, opposing factions courted Liang Wei and Anara, each promising support in exchange for future loyalties. A single misstep here could spell disaster for their mission and their lives. Torn between risky alliances and the safety of his caravan, particularly Anara, whose background introduced additional layers of complexity, Liang Wei grappled with the decisions ahead. 
The strain within the caravan was exacerbated when Giovanni's negotiations with the shadowy third faction added another entanglement to the existing web of intrigue, compounding the challenges to their cohesion and standing within Isfahan's political theater. A volatile confrontation with the factions put Liang Wei, Anara, and Giovanni at the epicenter of a political storm, each action scrutinized by the watchful schemes that wove through the city's fabric. Amidst escalating tensions, a blunder cast the group as inadvertent players in a plot against the Shah, compelling them to assess their options and make life-or-death decisions quickly. The chapter concludes amidst the chaos, with the caravan fleeing Isfahan as fugitives, pursued by the vengeful machinations they had wittingly or unwittingly crossed, leaving readers on the edge of their seats. Chapter 8 – Betrayal in Istanbul Upon arrival in Istanbul, the caravan was immediately enveloped by the eclectic vigor of a city bridging worlds. Here, the rich tapestry of East meets West, the city throbbed with life, the luxury of its mosques juxtaposed with the finesse of European designs, all set against the backdrop of busy markets and the Bosphorus's salty town. Recognizing the city's pivotal role in his quest, Liang Wei sought the favor of the Ottoman Sultan. The support of such a potentate was critical for safely navigating the Mediterranean, and despite daunting challenges, Liang Wei's determination stood firm. Leveraging her regional knowledge and Kazakh heritage, Anara became an invaluable ally, guiding Liang Wei through the subtle complexities of Ottoman court diplomacy. However, their party's unity was shattered when Giovanni's treachery was unveiled, his attempt to sell the indispensable map to a rival faction left the caravan's trust in ruins. Confronted by Liang Wei and Anara, Giovanni's reasons for betrayal, a blend of greed and motives yet concealed, heightened the moment's tenseness. With the map compromised, the group was spurred into urgent action, formulating a plan to recover their critical asset while outmaneuvering the scrutiny of Istanbul's authorities. An undercover informant emerged, illuminating the underbelly of Istanbul's covert networks and hinting at Giovanni's whereabouts, triggering a desperate pursuit through Istanbul's labyrinthine streets. An electrifying chase ensued, leading to a climactic showdown on the iconic Galata Bridge. With a mix of resolve and shrewdness, Liang Wei and Anara squared off against Giovanni and his cohorts. The tension culminated with the pair reclaiming the map amidst a fierce struggle, their success tempered by the injuries sustained and the stark reality of their endangered situation. With the map again in their possession, they sought a stealthy exit from the city that had once welcomed them. They relied on their knowledge of hidden passageways to elude the enemies within the Ottoman Empire's heart. As they distanced themselves from Istanbul's shores, Liang Wei and Anara ruminated on the far-reaching effects of Giovanni's betrayal, the erosion of trust within their ranks and the dangers ahead on their epic journey. Chapter 9 – The Hunt in the Mediterranean The Mediterranean stretched expansively before them, a vast azure canvas beneath the boldness of the sun. Resiliently and designed for long voyages, their vessel sliced through the waves, each crest a testament to their unyielding pursuit. The tang of sea salt and the exhilaration of adventure hung in the air, relentless reminders of their mission's gravity. At the ship's prow, Liang Wei and Anara plotted their next moves. They were tracking down Giovanni, and reclaiming the vital map called for a blend of insight and ingenuity. Each contemplated strategy was meticulously debated against the rhythmic backdrop of the sea. Arriving at a bustling port city, the duo disembarked, stepping into a whirlwind of commotion a vivid palette of merchants, sailors, and tales from distant lands. Within this hive of activity, they sought traces of their elusive quarry, Giovanni. They secured assistance from an informant whose awareness of the city's secrets could be tapped for the right price. Leveraging his diplomatic finesse, Liang Wei negotiated for crucial insights into Giovanni's location. Guided by the informant's knowledge, Liang Wei and Anara navigated the city's streets. Heightened senses taught them every alley a possible path to their objective. Their search intensified as treasure hunters, also vying for the map, crossed paths with the duo in a narrow byway. A tense confrontation ensued, 
a clash of wits and skill. The duo outmaneuvered their rivals, inching ever closer to the actual pursuit. Their search led them to the smuggler's den, where whispers of Giovanni's dealings with the collector reached their ears. The map seemed within reach, yet encased within the lavish walls of the collector's mansion. Adopting the guise of potential buyers, they stealthily navigated the mansion's grandeur, their eyes sharply peeled for Giovanni and the precious map he harbored. The search peaked in confrontation within the mansion's grand hall. Liang Wei and Anara stood resilient against Giovanni's cohort of mercenaries. The battle, intense and synchronized, showcased their unity and resolve. With assertive determination, Liang Wei reclaimed the map, a symbol of their relentless quest. Giovanni, now defeated and his designs foiled, retreated. With the map securely in hand, they orchestrated their departure from the labyrinthine city, their escape certifying their survival flair. Reunited with their comrades, Liang Wei and Anara's return was met with relief and jubilation, however, the echoes of the challenges ahead resounded with intensity. The map was recovered, and the odyssey persisted. Departing the coastal city, the caravan set sail anew. The beauty of the Mediterranean accompanied them, her charms veiling the perils that awaited in the depths of their pursuit. Chapter 10 Venice's Shadowy Waters Enshrouded by night, they navigated the enigmatic canals of Venice, a city of echoes and whispers, where gondolas traversed shadow and light. Under the moon's luminescence, ancient structures gleamed, setting a scene both mystical and impending. Consumed by anticipation and staunch resolve, Liang Wei guided the group through the winding waterways. Their goal, unyielding in its urgency, was retrieving what Giovanni had taken. Anara, ever vigilant, surveyed their path for perils, her senses finely tuned to the city's breath and pulse. In the darkened swells of Venice, her alertness served as their steadying beacon. Hidden amid the cryptic shadow play, Giovanni clutched the map, symbolizing his defiance and treachery. Aware of the pursuit, his thoughts raced, desperate to retain his ill-gotten prize. The silent stillness shattered when Liang Wei challenged Giovanni. Words, heavy with the gravity of their shared history and the sting of betrayal, hung in the thick air. The standoff, charged with raw emotion, was the journey's crescendo, the embodiment of conflict long simmering beneath the surface. Spurred by an amalgam of fury and fortitude, Liang Wei launched into action. The ensuing struggle was genuine the very essence of their confrontation. Anara, resolute and unwavering in her loyalty, joined the fray. Their movements melded together in a dance of controlled chaos, their collective skill overwhelming their foes. The clash, confined by the waterways, echoed off Phoenician walls, a ferocious display that marked a defining moment. Liang Wei disarmed Giovanni. Their victory was tangible as the map returned to its rightful hands. Giovanni's defeat, underscored by humiliation, saw him disappear into the fabric of the night. The aftermath left them steadying their breaths, the weight of their success dawning amidst the trembles of adrenaline and fatigue. In the shared gazes of the caravan members, a spectrum of relief, triumph, and an undercurrent of shaken trust reflected the night's events. With the map reclaimed, their collective sights set on the path ahead, the group readied to depart from Venice. Lingering amidst the canals, their ethos firmed by the challenges surmounted, they prepared to embark on the next leg of an ever unfurling odyssey. Chapter 11 Homeward Bound Embarking on the long journey back to Beijing, Liang Wei contemplated the landscape, each view interweaving with the tapestry of memories they had gathered. The diverse sceneries and cultures that characterized their trek along the Silk Road had transformed each participant, with every mile etching a story and every meeting imparting wisdom. A deep sense of achievement resonated with Liang Wei as he reflected on the hurdles overcome, the daunting deserts, the convoluted political intrigues, and the bouts of peril now chronicled within their story. Their unwavering solidarity and resolve triumphed, with each caravan member contributing their unique strengths to the cumulative success. Beside him, 
Anara mused over her evolution. The Odyssey had revealed her latent resilience and emphasized the importance of trust and the depth of camaraderie, she felt emboldened and more self-assured in her capabilities. Through quiet travel moments, Giovanni pondered the weight of his betrayal. He now recognized the breadth of his actions and sought the path to redemption, hoping to mend the fractured trust and atone for his betrayal. Their dialogues often meandered through the cultural exchanges they had encountered, marveling at the richness and diversity of the civilizations that adorned the Silk Road. Such interactions had broadened horizons, unveiling intricate world layers previously unimagined. She left an indelible mark in the moments of all that Liang Wei experienced, standing before monumental architecture or the sublime natural splendor. These experiences ignited an enduring passion for exploration and a profound reverence for the world's marvels. Conversations with Inara exuded gratitude for the immersive journey through varied traditions and cultures, which ingrained invaluable empathy and comprehension of a multifaceted world in her, a legacy that would extend beyond their journey's conclusion. Reunions with familiar faces from past encounters along their route sparked nostalgic exchanges, affirming the lasting connections and the supportive camaraderie built through shared trials. Liang Wei's introspection on his role as a cartographer transcended geographic documentation. His map encapsulated human interconnectedness, embodying the collective experiences and cultural richness of the Silk Road. As the chapter neared closure, the caravan rode buoyed by the memories and united in anticipation. The journey transformed their hearts and minds, and they looked forward to the adventures still awaiting them on the horizon. Chapter 12 Audience with the Emperor The Imperial Palace in Beijing commanded attention, an emblem of the Ming Dynasty's splendor, its vast grounds a tableau of bustling court life. Its roofs arched gracefully, adorned with dragons depicting centuries of imperial might. A mix of apprehension and expectancy overshadowed Liang Wei, adorned in his formal attire. Standing before the dragon throne would mark the culmination of his epic expedition, with the magnitude of this occasion weighing on his shoulders. Upon entering the throne room, a silence settled over the court officials, all eyes were captivated by the cartographer's solemn approach. The emperor, an embodiment of authority and introspective curiosity, welcomed Liang Wei, acknowledging the paramount importance of his completed map. As he unfurled the map, a collective gasp filled the chamber. The meticulously drawn borders and landscapes encapsulated the grandeur of the known world, each detail echoing the profound tales from their journey. A surge of pride swept through Liang Wei amidst the court's accolades, although a hidden restlessness stirred within recognition could not fully capture the transformative essence of his experiences. The emperor's commendations resonated throughout the throne room, extolling the map as a national treasure. Yet as Liang Wei retreated from the public eye, his mind engaged in deep reflection, he pondered over the personal growth sparked by the journey, the bonds formed, and the insightful cultural exchanges that had reshaped his understanding of the world. Realizing that the journey's value resided beyond the physical achievements, he acknowledged the intangible bonds and exchanges that had proved most enriching. His newfound understanding carried the weight of new challenges and the promise of future choices. Transitioning back to his quarters, Liang Wei resolved to share his tales with Anara and the rest, preparing to impart the myriad lessons and realizations gleaned from their travels setting the stage for a final contemplative close to their story. Chapter 13 Reflections and Resolve Amidst the serenity of his study, Surrounded by the artifacts acquired on their journey, maps, scrolls, and assorted keepsakes, Liang Wei sat thoughtfully, his face illuminated by candlelight, every wrinkle a chronicle of arduous miles and vivid experiences. The solitude was punctuated only by the rustling of papers and the soft sputter of candle flames. Liang Wei's distant gaze journeyed through landscapes of memory, his body heavy with travel's toll and his mind awash with introspection. Vivid flashbacks carried him to Beijing's vibrant streets, the inception point of their epic story. He recalled the apprehensions, the uncertainties, 
and the relentless hope that charted the course for a journey of self-discovery. His eyes lingered on a map of Samarkand, transporting him back to the architectural marvels and mosaic of cultures that had deepened his bond with Anara, their experiences entwining into a connection surpassing mere companionship. Contemplating their passage through the Pamir Mountains, Liang Wei recognized Anara's indomitable spirit a lighthouse during their darkest trials, unifying their group through resilience. Memories of navigating Persian intrigues, surviving the Mediterranean chase, and confronting betrayal in Venice filtered through his reverie. Each tribulation reinforced their tenacity and underscored the steep costs of their triumphs. As he mused over the quieter moments, Liang Wei grappled with the profound impact of their journey. Beyond the map's physical rendition lay the essence of forged friendships, shared resilience, and the discovery of the world's abundant cultures a treasure trove of experiences far exceeding the map's finite scope. Nearing the narrative's conclusion, Liang Wei stood resolute in cherishing the lessons learned. The Silk Road's enduring legacy comprised more than trade routes it symbolized the arteries of human connection and cultural interchange. His travels had ceased, yet the echoes of their encounters would inspire continued exploration into the vast, woven fabric that defines